Last week we talked personal safety gear and showed you what we keep in our grab bag. This week we're changing out our old chain and talking ground tackle. Okay, so as you can see our chains, our anchor chain is looking a bit rusty, we're changing it over for some new gal chain. Uh, we're also going from 70 metres to 100 metres because um, we'll need that for uh, anchoring at different atolls that are quite deep. So yeah, but we're not going to throw this chain away, we're going to take it for a drive up a gravel road and clean off the flakes and salvage what chain we can and we'll use that um, for stern anchors or extra, um, extra strength for moorings or cyclones or bad weather. So yeah, we'll, use, we'll save what we can and use it when we need it. So Darren's just on his way, we're going to offload this chain and get the new chain on board. metres of chain, 220 kilos of chain that was. Now we've got to get it on board the boat down into the anchor locker. <laughs> yeah. Look at our lovely chain! <laughs> so yeah we got got uh, new gal chain, it's 10 mil short link, uh, PWB brand. So yeah we went for the uh, more expensive but this is our life insurance when we're anchored on, off an atoll that um, stormy weather might come through and at least we know we've got good ground tackle. So yeah, get her on board. <laughs> mucky mucky. Mm. <laughs> How's it looking? Uh, pretty good, we're just about uh... got all the mud out. Yeah, it's not a very big drain hole actually, to... but it's it's designed like that for a reason. So, you know, when the bow gets buried into a wave, it you know, water, no, not much water can surge back up into the anchor well. But it's important to sort of keep it relatively keen because the other the other scenario is that. Um, when you take on water over the bow, you can actually get a lot of water come down the, the hose pipe if it's if it's not particularly covered up. So, um, you know, this this little drain will cater for for that sort of scenario. But um, in saying that, if you get a lot of mud in the in the bottom of the anchor locker, you can also block block that up. So. Um, then next thing you know, you've you've got water, you know, lapping up here. Even though this is a water water tight bulkhead, I'll you know, I'll, I'll if this was full, you know, potentially it's quite a big cavity. It could you know hold probably three or four hundred liters of water, and it'd be quite a bit of pressure on that. It might be weatherproof, but I'm not really sure about being waterproof. But, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So it's fairly important to keep that drain fairly fairly clear. I've heard of a guy that nearly lost a boat just through the same thing. I have too, yeah. Yeah, yeah I've heard those stories. So, yeah. yeah. It's a lot of volume to have at the front of the boat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I just thought I'd show you uh, the remnants of the uh, chain. This is all bits of rust and mank that have come off the chain over the years. It was all sitting in the bottom of the anchor well. We've pulled out about five or six of these trays worth of, uh, of mank and dust and rust so um, our chain the, the last of the chain was slowly disintegrating in the bottom of the anchor well and uh, eventually it was just causing us a lot of trouble every time we went to get anchored because it was sort of wedged in all this mud that was caked in the bottom of the anchor well so um, 
every time we wanted, if we were in a deep anchorage and we wanted to pay out all of our chain, it was becoming a bit of a problem to get it out. So yeah, anyway, new chain going in fairly shortly. Darren's down there just cleaning out the anchor well, getting the last of the mud out, and clearing the drain hole, and um, we'll have a hundred metres of new, new chain. Beauty. Look at our shiny new anchor chain. Alrighty. Where is it all? It's still in the trusty steed. <laughs> Our town car, so to speak. Look at that beautiful anchor chain just sliding on in. No rust flakes all over the deck. Oh, I love it. Yeah, so the way that we mark our chain so that we know how much we've got out is we put cable ties on every 10 metres. So this is the 90 metre mark. So Darren is going to put nine cable ties on here. <laughs> and they seem to hold up pretty well. We used to use, well I've used paint in the past, but um, it seems to wear off with going through the, um, the motions of in and out and sea life, so um, these things seems to last quite a while, we find them quite effective. Okay, so there you see uh, Darren's got the, uh, the shackles on. We, we always use rated shackles, but uh, we, we're not sure about this arrangement, we're just sort of thinking about putting a swivel on here, so we're just going to use this for now and see what we come up with research wise for a good quality swivel. Yeah so you can as you can see there Darren's just seizing the uh, pin of the shackle to the shackle which is just another safety me mechanism of the whole anchoring procedure. It'll stop the pin coming out. I have seen half wound pins in shackles and uh, that wouldn't be a very good very good outcome for us if our anchor let go because of a pin coming out of a shackle so yeah so we just uh, get this stainless wire seizing wire and that's what you use in the marine environment looking good honey okay so we just uh, thought that we would add on uh, for you a bit of information about our ground tackle because we've had quite a few people asking us uh, what we do have as our ground tackle. So what we run as our working anchor, which we can't show you at the moment because it's currently busy at work, and that is a 50 pound uh, Manson plough. And yep. it's, it's been a really good anchor for us and holds in almost any conditions we've come up with so far. It's a great um, multi-purpose anchor. We've you know, we've had it for years and years and uh, it's been a great thing. So uh, I guess there's better things on the market these days, but you know, I'd, I'd probably buy another one. I think they're great. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we're really happy with that one. So the other one that we have is this uh, little 25-pound Delta anchor. <laughs> Uh, and it's a good little backup anchor. We uh, use it as a stern anchor and uh, for helping us out when we're in rivers or in uh, tight situations. And also, um, we haven't used it in this way yet, but our intention is if we need to, we can add it to the chain on the working anchor and use it as a secondary in line backup anchor. So that's basically this little guy. It's actually light enough you can put in a <clears throat> put in a tender and run it out behind you. So it's um it's it's quite good for that sort of scenario where um, you you need to uh, you know run the line out behind you to get you in snug somewhere. It's um <clears throat> and it's got great holding power for the uh, the weight of the thing. <clears throat> you have to excuse poor Darren. He's got a, a flu at the moment and uh, he's struggling with his poor little voice. Yeah, the flu in the tropics, you can't believe it. Anyway, <laughs> it does happen. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so uh, the other anchor that we have that we are really happy with, and we just got this actually, um, and this is our storm anchor, and this is a Mantis 105 pound, and uh, she's a beefy number. I mean, look at how big, <laughs> big she is. A really long shank, and um, comes apart in three pieces. Uh, which we thought was really important for stowage on the boat because she's such a big girl. And one of the things we particularly like about it is the point is actually uh, got extra weight on it and uh, Darren was watching some really good YouTube videos actually and Mantis has some good videos as well. Um, the point actually because it's got the extra weight it'll actually dig in a little bit further than uh, other other brands that we've that we compared it to so that's one of the other reasons we really liked it and the, the other advantage with um, mantis they they rave about um, how fast they actually set and when you see the the design of them and uh, the way these anchors are actually balanced I'll just show you the You know, when it when it's sitting like that, this this thing just it, all the weight is nearly on the point, and they've got a nice sharp point. So if the seabed's really hard, it, you've it's got the ability to bite in. Where some of the others just just haven't got that uh, determination. We'll use for a word. <laughs> I love a determined anchor. <laughs> so, that's what that's <clears throat> so it had really two two big things that um, going for the mantis that that that, um, that sort of sold us but when you watch some of the YouTube videos on and comparisons against um, some of the top anchors <clears throat> it was it personally I think they were way in front of any, anything else and I'd, I'd certainly probably buy one of these for a working anchor when uh, when our old plough decides that it's going to wander off to Davy Jones's locker. So um, yeah, uh, with the chain that we just took off, that we just uh, swapped over, we cut off a couple of 20 metre lengths of that chain, of the chain that was still viable from the old anchor chain, and we've kept that. Um, for, for use in storms or stern anchors or whatever just to give us that little bit of extra weight and uh, when we tie that onto our nylon road. So we've got a 125 metre roll of nylon road that we attach the, the 3 8 chain lengths to and uh, we, we have got some 25 metre lengths of nylon road already cut up so we'll use that uh, extra roll as we need it depending on which situations we come to. So it might be as stern lines um, or as, you know, uh, extra spare lines for cyclone mooring um, as the old ones wear out. So yeah, good to have on board. Yeah, so uh, we, um, this anchor is a storm anchor. Uh, it's rated um, for a 50 to 60 foot vessel and our vessel is a 47 foot so it is a little bit oversized but we're really happy with that uh, a little extra insurance so it's a 40 kg 105 pound storm anchor and uh, they mantis say uh, for wind, spring, wind speeds greater than 55 knots so we've discussed this and we would happily out a cat one maybe a cat two cyclone which is uh, tops of 70 knots but uh, we would not sit out this is our own personal decision we would not sit out more than that on this anchor if it's anything more than a cat two heading your way we would be heading for other forms of shelter and that would be our primary choice in any scenario so if it was just a cat one and we could get to some mangroves or better shelter than sitting out in an open bay on anchor that's our first choice so I just wanted to reiterate that um, yeah just because we have um, spent a bit of time in cyclone areas so typically uh, what uh, we've both found is that you know that cat 
that Debbie, Cyclone Debbie, which was a Cat 5 that we sat through, it was a Cat 1 when we first saw it, and it was a Cat 5 by the time it got to us. Cyclones are unpredictable, and as they get to the coast, they spin up more and become more our stronger systems and they intensify more. So yeah, um, our first preference is to run yeah, and hide somewhere. Run, run for cover. Yeah, so this is a storm anchor for storm weather, not necessarily a cyclone anchor. Yeah, that, uh, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just a little bit of, um, a little bit more insurance. If you're out a little bit wider and there's nowhere to run, um, look, I, I certainly wouldn't recommend uh, being somewhere where, where there's nowhere to hide and come cyclone season. Yeah, so, uh, always find somewhere. Always find, when you're heading in cyclone zone, always find somewhere that you're going to hang out and be safe in. Um, before the cyclone comes. Don't be looking for it when there's a cyclone coming your way. You already must know where you're going to run to, wherever you are when you're in a cyclone zone. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah so Mantis were um, our top choice and uh, we found actually they were a top company to deal with. We were really happy with their service. Um, just really good people, uh, easy to get in hold of and uh, we're not in the uh, easiest location to get to. <laughs> And this anchor rocked up to us in about four days, so um, we were really, really impressed with um, with Mantis as a company. So yeah, yeah, yeah go for it. If you're curious, um, check them out on YouTube. Um, they've got some really good um, uh, videos on YouTube which show the way in which the anchor sets and holds. So um, that if you have it, if you're looking for a new anchor or a storm anchor, then maybe uh, check those out and. Um, you'll be able to see whether it's the anchor for you. Okay, so that about wraps up this episode. And uh, thank you very much. We hope you found it informative. If you've got any questions, please comment below. We'd be happy to answer them for you for anything that we might have missed. <laughs> and uh, yeah, um, please subscribe. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, uh, you can press the little bell on the top right and that'll uh, YouTube will then notify you of any of our, uh, our next videos when they come out and um, yeah if you like the video please give us the big thumbs up it really helps us out we really appreciate it so all right, all right. <coughs> that's enough for me anyway that's <laughs> goodbye from captain flu yeah. <laughs> and goodbye for me wishing you a great week ciao for now <laughs>